hope you all have got a chance to fill out these little charts in the choir. If not, you can do it at the end, don't worry. I'll still be at the end. All right, let's jump right into it, shall we? Our next speaker grew up amongst a variety of animals. Gabrielle Openshaw moved to Canberra to attain a Bachelor of Science Advanced Honours with the dream of becoming a female version of David Attenborough. I can't get one voice that way, so I don't know how you get. During this time, Gabrielle became more affected by media concerning animal welfare, particularly earthlings and anti-fur campaigns. In 2013, Gabrielle won an Australian postgraduate award and began her PhD at ANU, continuing her research on the evolution of head shape in monitor lizards. In the same year, Gabrielle adopted her first ex-racing greyhound and started the ACT Greyhound Support Network together with Cindy Daly. So please make a warm welcome to ACT Greyhound Support Network. volunteering at the RSPCA ACT uh, kennels here as a kennel sitter, mainly because I missed my dogs back home in Sydney, but also because I wanted to meet a greyhound. I ended up falling in love with a pitbull cross named Squishy, and when he was adopted, it pushed me to adopt a dog of my own. Because I hadn't seen any greyhounds come through the RSPCA, I decided to contact Greyhound Rescue, which is a charity based in Sydney. They put me back in contact with two local people, Cindy Daly and Justin Mayfield, who originally owned Ruby and Shadow. Sadly, when Shadow passed, they were understandably very upset, and they felt that fostering another greyhound might help to fill that gap left by Shadow. And it turned out that their foster greyhound, Bobby, was my ideal match. <laughs> Shortly after adopting Bobby, I started a Facebook group uh, to connect local experienced greyhound owners, foster carers, and prospective adopters. The initial idea was to use the Facebook group to organise social events like pack walks uh, and off-leg runs, and also to share tips on everything greyhound related from behaviour to diet. We also ended up showing the progress of dogs from rescue to adoption. Introducing Prince Harry and Pippa. These two adopted Picton Pound together and subsequently were um, rescued by a Brisbane based charity, Gumtree Grace. My mum saw the pound photo of Prince Harry and she knew it was fate. <laughs> so I got in, Gumtr in contact with Gumtree Grace uh, to organise a trial. My parents ended up adopting him and I ended up uh, fostering Pippa here. After rehoming Pippa locally, I continued to work with Gumtree Grays, rescuing and rehoming dogs locally, and Cindy and other Facebook members continued rehoming through uh, Greyhound Rescue. So now the AGSN was also providing charities based in New South Wales and Queensland, and later on Victoria, with a dedicated network of helpers uh, to increase rehoming opportunities here in the ACT, and also to fundraise. So in under two years, our group has rehomed around 200 greyhounds locally and raised over $20,000, as well as organising mass donations of things like toys, beds, food. Another of our central aims is to positively promote greyhounds, <coughs> which involves getting the dogs out in public, telling people that they don't need that much exercise, explaining that the muzzles don't mean they're vicious, that sort of thing. We've had meet and greet style events, sponsored barbecues, market stalls, a presentation at Canberra Girls Grammar School, and we've even had around eight newspaper articles. And this is something that I'm really happy about. So earlier this year, Dr. West from the Animal Referral Hospital approached the network to set up a blood donor program. <coughs> Basically, some of us volunteer our hounds to give blood every two to three months, and this saves greyhounds from being kept permanently in facilities where they drained more regularly. Something to make clear is that the AGSN focuses on social networking and positive promotion of the breed. We have no policy position on greyhound racing. And this way, as many people can get involved as possible. 
But naturally, many of our members are concerned with greyhound welfare, and some of us are able to pursue the advocacy path more strongly. So before I go into anything welfare related, um, I obviously need to explain a little bit about greyhound racing. So commercial dog racing as we know it today was actually invented in California in 1919 when Owen Patrick Smith came up with the mechanical lure. By 1930, 67 greyhound racing tracks were in operation across the US, all of which were well-known uh, illegal sites for gambling. But since the 1980s, greyhound racing has seen massive decline in popularity across the US. And as of August this year, there are only 21 tracks remaining in seven states. And just for some perspective, this graph here shows the eight countries worldwide that currently have commercial dog racing. So that's Australia, Ireland, Macau, Mexico, New Zealand, the UK, the US, and Vietnam. Now in Australia, there are controlling bodies for greyhound racing in each state and territory. In the ACT, we have the Canberra Greyhound Racing Club. In 1936, something called Greyhounds Australasia was formed to try and unite each of these controlling bodies, and also to include New Zealand. This is who we have to turn to if we want any sort of basic stats about the industry, and that's what I'm showing you here. So here is a table of um, statistics provided by Greyhounds Australasia for our local Canberra Club for the past five years. What we see is that no owners or trainers are actually registered with the local club and there have been no greyhounds born or named here. But despite this, we still provide considerable state money and there are over 3,500 greyhounds competing here. The main point that I want to get across is that greyhound racing and welfare in the ACT must be viewed in the context of greyhound racing New South Wales. Okay, so I don't want to go into detail about this tonight, I'll just touch on it and suggest that continuing to support this industry means facing live baiting as a very real and widespread concern, regardless of whether it, whether it physically happens in Canberra. Here is an article from 1949 that sounds like it was written in February this year. Basically, the RSPCA is investigating reports that Live possums, cats and dogs were being used to train greyhounds in Newcastle, Bankstown and Eastwood. Now there is evidence of it happening much closer to home. So in October last year, an industry participant was uh, fined $400 after pleading guilty to trying to acquire live animals for use in live bait training. Now since the expose which targeted major trial tracks close to cities, um, more regional properties have been um, targeted and participants found guilty, including people from Coonabarabran and Tamworth. So what is the New South Wales industry based on? Well, the 2014 independent report on the economic benefits of all three codes of racing, so harness racing, thoroughbreds and greyhounds, states Breeders kickstart a chain of activity which leads to the production of a racing product that is consumed by audiences on most days of the year. I'd like to introduce to you one very lucky racing product. A few days after suspecting six-month-old puppy had broken her leg, her breeder finally contacted the owner to ask whether he wanted her to see a vet. He said to kill her rather than pay the vet bill. But her breeder surrendered her to Greyhound Rescue instead, and that's why I named her Lucky. I have to advise that there are some disturbing images on the next slide, in case anyone wants to look away. I took Lucky straight to our vets here in Canberra, who ruled out broken bones and established that Lucky had sustained some crushing injury, likely a dog bite that had gone untreated. Bacteria had festered beneath the skin, um, and then spread down uh, to her foot, resulting in massive swelling and cellulitis. So that night, Lucky's temperature dropped and her body went into septic shock. Remarkably, she survived the night, but the next morning, big chunks of skin started sloughing off her leg. As you can see in the middle photo, that was when it started. 
Then within 48 hours, abscesses formed that literally dripped with infection ooze for days. Lucky's leg was necrotic and it needed to be amputated. But the vets had to wait a week while Lucky's body fought out the infection and it became more clear just how much tissue had died so that the vets could plan the surgery. Our little warrior Lucky pulled through a complicated three and a half hour amputation surgery and she was in foster care with me the next night. Today Lucky got her stitches out and she's been a tripod greyhound for three weeks. So it's a good master. <laughs> So, what can Lucky teach us? Well, the cost of racing is huge for people in Canberra. So Lucky's vet bill was around four and a half thousand dollars. Anyone who knows about vet treatment will tell you that that's including some seriously generous discounts um, by some very supportive vets. Now last year, Greyhound Rescue's vet bill was over 70 grand. This is the racing industry, which is very, very expensive. Secondly, she shows us that greyhounds really are unnecessarily killed at the track. So on the 6th of September, at the Canberra Greyhound Racing Club, discombobulated gear was put down after he broke a wrist. But the main thing that she's taught me <coughs> is that we can improve trackside welfare all we want, and we can worry about live baiting, but at the end of the day, it's the fact that these dogs are being puppy farmed that is the real issue. So this is Lucky's litter. As you can see, she is one of eight puppies. She comes from a breeding complex that houses between 20 and 30 brood bitches. I wanted to find out how many greyhounds were born in the same month as Lucky. So I went to Greyhound Racing New South Wales and counted that in March in New South Wales alone this year, 139 litters were whelped. A total of 987 puppies were registered. So what is the future for greyhounds? Well, intensive breeding facilities are a serious animal welfare issue that the community doesn't support. And criminalising puppy farms received unanimous support within the ACT. But Lucky's story highlights the fact that as long as the victims of puppy farming in New South Wales are being used for profit here in the ACT, it remains a major local animal welfare concern. Moving forward, the first step is to clarify whether companion animal law actually covers greyhounds or whether they're considered livestock. If anyone knows anything about this, I would love to have a chat. Um, but ultimately, I think my vision is that the ACT will be the first state or territory to stop funding an industry reliant on puppy farming for its racing products. Thank you.